thus dealing with it from the standpoint of the solar system and of a human being. This will necessitate some preliminary technicalities which may seem at first perusal to be somewhat abstruse and complicated but which, when meditated upon and studied, may eventually prove illuminating and of an elucidating nature, and which also, when the mind has familiarized itself with some of the details, may come to be regarded as providing a logical hypothesis concerning the nature and origin of energy. We have elsewhere, in an earlier book, touched somewhat upon this matter, but we desire to recapitulate and in so doing to enlarge, thus laying down a broad foundation upon which the subject matter can be built up and providing a general outline which will serve to show the limits of our discussion. Let us, therefore, look at the subject macrocosmically and then trace the correspondence in the microcosm, or human being. I. Fire in the macrocosm. In its essential nature fire is threefold, but when in manifestation it can be seen as a fivefold demonstration, and be defined as follows. 37. 1. 38. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on cosmic fire. Fire by friction, or internal vitalizing fire. These fires animate and vitalize the objective solar system. They are the sum total of Logoic Kundalini, when in full systemic activity. 2. Solar fire, or cosmic mental fire. This is that portion of the cosmic mental plane which goes to the animation of the mental body of the Logos. This fire may be regarded as the sum total of the sparks of mind, the fires of the mental bodies and the animating principle of the evolving units of the human race in the three worlds. 3. Electric fire, or the logoic flame divine. This flame is the distinguishing mark of our logos, and it is that which differentiates him from all other logoi, it is his dominant characteristic, and the sign of his place in cosmic evolution. This threefold fire may be expressed in ray terms as follows. First. We have the animating fires of the solar system, which are the fires of the primordial ray of active intelligent matter, these constitute the energy of Brahma, the third aspect of the Logos. Next are to be found the fires of the divine ray of love wisdom, the ray of intelligent love, which constitutes the energy of the Vishnu. Aspect the second aspect logo of point four finally are to be found. Four inches that wherein to all enter, the Shanti, is Vishnu, he who covers up, envelopes, surrounds, undertakes all, is Brahma, he who sleeps, shed, in everything, is Shiva. Shiva sleeps, lies hidden, in all and everything is the nexus, the bond, and this is the nature of desire. Granite signifies the envelopment, the covering with an envelope, the demarcation of the limiting bounds or the periphery, and so the formation or creation of all forms and this is action presided over by Brahma. The Shanti Sarvani indicates that all things enter into it and it into all, and such as the self, connected with cognition and Vishnu. The summation or totality of these is Maha Vishnu. Maha Vishnu, the overlord of all this world system, is described as the Ishvara, white-colored, four-armed, adorned with the conch, the discus, the mace, the lotus, the forest wreath, and the cans to the gem, shining, vestured in blue and yellow, endless and imperishable in form, a tributellus, yet ensuing and underlying all attributes. 
Here, the epithet Ishvara indicates the rule, the four arms, the four activities of cognition, etc., the white resplendence is the illumination of all things, the Shenka, Kong. INTROGUCTORYMARKS 39 The fires of the cosmic mental plane, which are the fires of the cosmic ray of will. They might be described as the rays of intelligent will and are the manifestation of the first aspect logoic, the Mahadeva aspect. Point five. Therefore we have three cosmic rays manifesting. The ray of intelligent activity. This is a ray of a very demonstrable glory, and of a higher point of development than the other two, being the product of an earlier Mahakalpa or a previous solar system. Point six it embodies. Her shell indicates all sound, and the chakra, wheel or discus all time, there being a connection between the two, Gata, the whirling mace, is the spiral method of the procession of the world and the lotus flower is the whole of that procession, the Vanamala, the wreath of forest flowers indicates the stringing together of all things into unity and necessity, the Neelapit Ambara, Blue and yellow vestures, are darkness and light, the Kaustuba jewel indicates inseparable connection with all, Nirguna, a tributellus, shows the presence of the nature of negation, while Saguna, a tributeful, implies possession of name and form. The world process, as embodied in our world, system, is the result of the ideation of Mahavishnu. Pranavavada, pp. 72-74, 94-95. 5 Mahadeva is literally, Great Diva. The term is frequently applied to the first person of the manifested trinity, to Shiva, the destroyer aspect, the creator. 6 inches one day out of this long life of Brahma is called Kalpa, and a kalpa is that portion of time which intervenes between one conjunction of all the planets on the horizon of Lanka, at the first point of Aries, and a subsequent similar conjunction. A kalpa embraces the reign of 14 manus and their sandies intervals, each manu lying between two sandies. Every manu's rule contains 71 maha yugas, each Maha Yuga consists of four Yugas, viz. Krita, Treta, Dwapara, and Kali, and the length of each of these four Yugas is respectively as the numbers, 4, 3, 2 and 1. The number of sidereal years embraced in the foregoing different periods are as follows, mortal years. 360 days of mortals make a year. Krita Yuga contains Treta Yuga contains Dwapara Yuga contains Kali Yuga contains The total of the said four Yugas constitute a Maha Yuga. 71 of such Maha Yugas form the period of the reign of one Manu. Reign of 14 Manus embraces the duration of 994 Maha Yugas, which is equal to Add Sandis, i.e., intervals between the reign of each Manu, which amount to 6 Maha Yugas, equal to The total of these reigns and interregnums of 14 Manus, is 1000 Maha Yugas, which constitute a Kalpa, i.e., one day of Brahma, equal to 1. 1,728,000 1,291,000 864,000 4,320,000 432,000 306,720,000
4,320,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
these three expressions of the divine life may be regarded as expressing the triple mode of manifestation.